All right, hi, welcome to another edition of Tops, the Titans of Money, the Titans of Money, what? The Titans of Publishing Show. Um, <laughs> I have not yet started drinking, but I'm gonna. Um, I'm Bill Davis, your co-host, and Mark Hardy here is our other co-host. Say hi, Mark. Hi, I will tell you that um, maybe you should refer to me as Mark Party since it is kind of happy hour. Now, I'm not cons I am not consuming any alcohol either, but I think we're we're being silly enough that you would think we were. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Um All right. So, I just want to let you know in 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 my new uh, my new house um it is snowing outside. It's snowing in your house. <laughs> outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, You've got an atrium in the middle of a house. <laughs> and stuff just comes right in. <laughs> you hear the birds? I do. What's that? Do you hear the birds? Oh, yeah. 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 So do I. They're all in my head, but they're here. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're in for a good time today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so um, we've been talking about storytelling and things like that, but I wanted to change it. I wanted to change it up a bit. Um, in the past, we've talked about um, things like you know inspiration and, and different sources for like inspiration uh, and creativity and production. And today let's talk about production. How do you, how can you be productive when you don't feel like being productive? Um, or how do you, how do you produce things when you just don't feel very creative? And one of the things I do um, is I actually go to uh, uh, public domain sites and I look and see what's there because most of the things there are nearly a hundred years old, like 1920, whatever that date is, um, where if you don't renew your copyright, it, it vanishes and most people don't, um, except if you're the evil empire, AKA Disney, um, who co copyrights everything all the time, because you know, if there's a penny on the table, man, you gotta pick it up. And the, um, and the irony is they've used public domain material for a lot of their successes, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah, Cinderella. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, I, I just kind of wanted to talk to you and talk to anybody who's listening um, or watching. What's been your experience with public domain stuff, if any? Do you use it? Um, have you ever used it? How did you use it? And what are your thoughts? So mm -hmm. you have any ideas about that work? None whatsoever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. It's been a good show. Um, we will see you later. There's always next Friday. Yes, yes, it's the great. Um, well, here's the thing. I mean, I, I think we talked about this before. Now, um, I haven't really done anything with public domain works, although, you know, at one point I was uh, looking at doing a children's book. And so I did kind of just look at kind of what was available because that, you know, when you look at illustration and everything that's involved and I'm going to really be supplying the writing side, you know, it gets a little, uh, a little complicated. So, uh, so, you know, the, the, the quick and, and transparent answer is no, I'm not one to speak of about that. You know, in one of our previous calls, I think we talked about PLR, which I have used, which is different, but it is, uh, you know, an alternate source to, you know, creating or, or, you know, taking existing content and then modifying and enhancing it. So, um, you know, I'd love to hear kind of, you know, I mean, if you have any insights or, you know, you know, some actionable steps that if somebody wants to find out more about um, uh, public domain content, uh, you know, how do they get started and, and uh, what their expectations should be? Yeah, so um, I was awake in the middle of the night last night and I <laughs> just happened to uh, come across again, which I've been, uh, I've been there before, but 
uh, Project Gutenberg, which is mm. a public domain uh, website for U.S. copyright um, that you can go to and you can download all the free ebooks you want. And there's no copyright. Uh, you know, it's free to use, free to use even commercially. So you could find books there that um, you could gussy up, you could uh, reprint, you could throw a bunch on a USB stick or on a CD or a DVD. You could, you could even mash two, three, four different books together, which I think would be fun. You know, re remember the old days when, when we had those article spinners and you, and you would basically dump a bunch of content in there and it would mix it all up and make it completely unreadable and illegible. Well, you could do that with public domain work too. Um, but I think it would be fun because if you could take like, tying this into last week, how you have, you know, different, uh, what was it, 25 different plots? Um, yeah, it's 20, 20 uh, master plots, and I think it was like 45 master characters. Yeah, if you could take like three or four classics um, and, and, and take different pieces of them, um, different plot elements, and, and just kind of like, weave through the same character throughout the story, but the story's different, it could be quite interesting. It, it would probably turn out to be quite dumb, but as, 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 as an experiment, it, it, it could be very interesting. Um, but the point is, with, with public domain work, if, if you get the right, you know, if you get the non-copyrighted, you know, the, the, where the copyrights run out, you could do literally anything with them you could simply take the file you get on project gutenberg and give it away or sell it um and you could you could package things in a way that you're you're adding value to the original work by bringing in lots of different disparate resources um that that may lend themselves to the same idea or concept or topic um and i've seen people do this i've seen this stuff on ebay and you know think about it if you if you sell these things for five bucks you know say you get a usb stick for i don't know 10 bucks and you sell the whole thing for 15 bucks um you you and you sell let's just say you sold 20 of them you know that's money that, that you didn't do much for you you literally found these things you copied them onto a USB stick or a CD-ROM, and you put them in the mail. That's it. Now, I don't think I'd like doing that myself, but it is a way for you to actually provide a service. You're, you're a publisher. You're literally a publisher because you're taking work um, and, and, and you know publishing it to, to a media or medium, and um, you're, 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 in a sense, making... Uh, those works available to people who may not have ever even heard of them. I ran across a book last night that I found very interesting and it, and it had, I don't remember the exact title, but it was um, basically business etiquette. And I started reading it and I thought, Oh hell, I wish people would do that nowadays. Um, you know, different, different things that were mentioned in that book were like, they're, they're, they're things from a bygone era, you know, like, how many people shake hands anymore or smile or, or, you know, you know, that kind of thing. It, it was just, it was a blast from the past. You know, the stuff was like 70, 80 years old or the book was, um, but it was extremely interesting and it would be really, really refreshing if people actually did that. And I think a lot of people, you know, would probably read that book. Um, yeah. I mean, as you were, as you were talking, I was getting all sorts of ideas, you know, that as a jumping off point, that would make a great blog post where you could do, you know, what happens today, what happened 80 years ago, you know, with a, a scenario. I mean, you know, and sometimes these things come back, you know, so for, so for example, you know, if you write a personal thank you note or a physical card, I mean, you know, who does that anymore? I mean, uh, you know, I mean, everything's so easy. You, you, you do an email, you, you, you know, you send a digital card. And so you do something that, that is, different than what other people are doing and you stand out so 
you know, going, so, you know, this idea about like what business etiquette was like 80 years ago and what it is today and kind of comparing and contrasting. And, and that, I guess, is another tip about, you know, you don't have to necessarily, I mean, sure, if you want to just be kind of fast and easy, you can take the content as is and you can certainly edit it and modify it. But, you know, Bill made a great you know point about he found something that was older. And so we immediately have this built in contrast between, you know, the the business etiquette in the past and the business etiquette today. And you, you could do a whole thing on etiquette. You could do business etiquette. You could do personal etiquette. You know, well, yep. how, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, I mean, I think etiquette just in total has kind of um, taken a few hits with, uh, you know, I mean, you know, how, I mean, I, I don't think it's really good etiquette to, or maybe it's just common courtesy that you just withdraw and you just look at your phone when you're actually, you know, at a table or having a meal or, you know, you know, I mean, can't you just kind of put the, you know, put that aside for a moment? So yeah. I sorry to get, get off into a little bit of a rant, but. No, that's a rant that, I, that you and I share. I, I have a friend who I don't see often, like maybe once, twice, every couple of years. And it's, you know, we'll go out to lunch or dinner. And as soon as we sit down, he gets out his phone and it's like, what the hell? I can go well, without you. <laughs> well, what I don't get is, you know, I've gone to events and I'm sitting in a seat. I'm thinking, you know, I paid, you know, low, you know, three figures for this seat. Here's somebody next to me. And they're like either talking on the phone or doing something on the phone. I'm thinking, is that better than what you paid money for to be present right now? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it's amazing. Or, or, or people will watch a whole damn event, like a live event. That's a, that's a killer event. It's through their little phone. And they'll stand up in front of people and they'll look at the whole event through their phone. And it's like, you could look at the whole event like this. Yeah. It's, not, it's being televised. So you could see the recording in like, actual real production quality high definition you're an idiot just sit down <laughs> um but yeah that that has nothing to do with what we're talking about um but it was fun and it was um another another great source that that um that, that i found is you know how stock photos you know to get the really good ones usually cost you an arm and a leg and you can only use on one site and blah, blah, blah. We, there's a whole host. There's like, I was looking at one, a list just yesterday that had at least 25 sources of free, you know, free of copyright, free to use in, in, in commercial as well as uh, personal use photos um, where you don't have to pay 20 bucks for an image or whatever. Um, and, and it, I looked at some of the sources and they were incredible. I mean, high definition, high quality, you know, high resolution, uh, images, um, that you can use however you wish you could even resell them. That's crazy. It's out there. Um, there, there's, there are opportunities everywhere and, and let's face it, you know, a lot of people offer those kinds of services, but you know, tying in with what Mark said, if you, if you if you basically brought in some of those resources and gave and and gave them away or sold them, and then added in the extra, you know, handwritten note as a thank you for anybody who subscribes or buys or whatever, the whole point of marketing really, and, and most of us market similar goods or services, is to be not only good, but different. How am I going to stand out in my customer's head? Right. And if I do, if I do one or two things just a little bit differently, that makes me stand out. Doesn't it's, it's almost like the offer doesn't matter. Um, can, can I share a, um, yeah, go ahead. a personal anecdote about standing out? Um, and, uh, this is, uh, this is going way back to, uh, probably the first, I want to say, five years of my advertising career. Most of my career was spent in advertising as a writer or creative director. 
And um, uh, I met a guy, uh, you know, unfortunately, he was older than me. He's no longer with us, but he lives on because of, of you know, stuff like this. Um, he, uh, you know, how many times have you either heard of somebody going to an interview um, and uh, not getting the job or feeling like they could have done something differently? Well, Steve interviewed for, uh, his name is Steve Nelson, interviewed for a job that he wasn't qualified for. And uh, it was director of promotion for one, if not the biggest AM uh, radio station in Chicago, was one of the top three. And he didn't really have that background. It really came from a sales background. And what he ended up doing is, and I guess, you know, it had to be an appropriate time in the conversation. He literally jumped up on the desk of the guy that was interviewing him. Now, as you can, <laughs> as you can imagine, this could have gone either way. But the guy was so kind of, you know, captivated by Steve's passion. And, you know, let's face it, radio promotion, you got to, you know, this is not something you just kind of do, kind of put in your nine to five hours. You really got to bust your, bust your ass. And yeah. he was so convinced that, you know, of Steve's commitment, he was over, you know, he was willing to overlook his lack of, you know, actual experience. And, you know, he went on just to, just to kind of show what kind of turning point uh, that he had. He ended up staying, uh, being the promotion director for three years, and he parlayed that to becoming um, the, um, the director of the uh, Illinois State Lottery, which uh, was a huge opportunity. Yeah. So, you know, the only reason I mentioned that is, and I know we're veering off a little bit from publishing, is, you know, doing the unexpected. You know, everybody does emails, you write a personal note or, you know, send a personal card. So that's a very extreme example of doing the unexpected. In Steve's case, it literally was, you know, the milestone of a very successful career um, because he took a chance. Yeah, that's a cool story. And that, you know, that, that segues into, into my story about somebody jumping up on a desk. But um, <laughs> um, no, seriously, when I was in college, um, I was so tired, burnt out from school. I couldn't wait to get out. And then as soon as I was out, I wanted to go back. But um, I couldn't wait to get out. So I took a summer, a, a summer school class, uh, the last term I could to graduate that uh, spring or summer or whatever. Um, and I had, I, I took an economics class. I don't remember which one, but it was early in the morning. It was like at seven in the morning. I was at UC Davis, you know, it was, um, you, you ride your bike to school. So I'd get up at like six 45, get on the bike, get to class, still tired. And every morning, every single class, and I think it was five days a week. And it was like an hour and a half. It was, but it was compressed into like a few weeks. A number of us would would fall asleep in class. And one day, I'd fallen asleep. And the next thing I know, the professor had jumped up on the desk in front of me. <laughs> and he was he was kind of like. He was standing on the desk, but he was crouching down, so he was almost at our height. And he was yelling with his, with his fist pumping in the air, how dare you sleep in my class? And we all woke up, and we were all like, oh, shit. And I'll, I know all of us were like, "That will, I will never be able to fall asleep in this class again. This is not ever going to happen. And, you know, 15 seconds later, <laughs> I hated that class. Everybody hated that class. I think the professor hated that class. We all hated that class. But um, he stood out, and I remember him to this day. <laughs> but you still fell asleep. But I still fell asleep. But, you know, I got my degree in economics, so there you go. Um, his job was done. Um, <laughs> anywho, um, I'd be interested to find out if anybody who watches this uh, later on uh, uses any public domain work and, and how they do it. And... Um, if you're interested, uh, 
you know, leave a comment that says I'm interested um, and I'll send you a, a little list of, of resources that I have for that. And um, you can have that for free and use it at your leisure. And other, other than that, I think we're, I think we're done. Um, it's been a nice show. Um, I don't know if it's still snowing outside, but I'm going to go take a look. My son's coming home from school in just a few minutes. So we'll probably go out there and, you know, there's probably enough snow in our front yard to make one little tiny snow nugget. Um, and he'll get to throw it at me. So that'll be good. Anyway, Mark, you have any uh, weekend plans? Uh, yes. I'm going to go see Thor oh, Ragnarok my. probably Sunday. Very cool. You'll have to tell me how that goes. I know I'm not going to go because movie, movie, yeah. movies are very expensive. And, and, and I always get some idiot sitting in front of me with the cell phone out. So, which goes back to one of our earlier comments about people being, yeah, and I and that actually does annoy me. I've seen people during the movie, you know, they get bored and they start, you know, doing stuff on their phone. And, and maybe I'm, I'm kind of channeling my, you know, older get off my lawn. Um, but, you know, I, I want them, you know, it's distracting and I want to watch the movie. And, it, and I'm like, hey, you know, go out in the lobby. You're not you're not in anything here. So. Yeah, I, I know you're in a dark theater, and one cell phone comes on and it's completely bright. Yeah, get out of here. I, I you know, you, you hear people getting in fights at the movies and stuff like that. I'm not like that, but it's like I, I will tell you to turn the damn thing off. Yeah, I will too. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Um, Bye. Top show, and uh, have a good weekend, guys. Bye.